Well, Gajendra Kumar phone number, you have uh, two, 20 minutes. How many minutes, sir? 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you especially for not uh, reducing any of my time, which is a very, very rare uh, occurrence in this House. Uh, Honorable Presiding Member, <clears throat> when I chose to speak today, I actually didn't uh, realize that uh, today marks the beginning of a week in the Tamil uh, calendar where we commemorate uh, fallen heroes of the LTT. Now, that's a very controversial issue as far as this house is concerned. But uh, uh, I pay my respects uh, and commence my speech. Now, I said that at the beginning because it's been 14 years since the war came to an end. And honorable presiding member, if you ask the people of the Northeast, particularly the Tamils, uh, whether they are in a better place uh, than 14 years ago, and I say this with respect and uh, much responsibility, the answer will be no. Uh, at the uh, immediate aftermath of the war coming to an end, the Tamil people were actually confused because they supported an armed struggle, a struggle that caused a lot of destruction in their own economy. Because of uh, the haloed uh, idea of freedom and creating a separate state, there can be no doubts about that. But that, uh, when that struggle came to an end, uh, their idea of freedom also came into question because the LTT was portrayed as a, a very strong military organization. It was spoken about the world over. And if that such an organization uh, and the struggle can in fact be brought to an end, uh, then whether the ideals for which that struggle stood for is achievable, and whether the Tamil people must rethink. There was a moment when the Tamil people were asking and doing a soul searching whether we were not being practical in uh, supporting separate, uh, a separate state and an armed struggle. And it is in that context, honorable presiding member, that every member of this house, and in fact, even outside, must look back and do some soul searching and ask if 14 years after the end of the war, those very same people who are prepared to soul search are today saying that they are in a worse place, then there is something radically wrong. Then there is something radically wrong. Now, you can, you can quite easily put off someone like us, can quite easily put off the way the Tamil people are being treated in the Northeast as racism. We'll just say. But if you ask, not just the Tamils. If you ask other members of this island, and they will tell you the same thing today, that they are far worse off. So surely, honorable presiding member, 14 years after the end of the war, when common sense ought to dictate that this country should have, should have developed moved forward by leaps and bounds, if we are today scraping the barrel to an extent that even at the height of the war, even at the height of the war, this country never had to, then surely, surely there is something radically wrong. This system is stinking. And if we don't realize it at least today, and think anew, then, honorable presiding member, we are not going to get out of this mess. Now, Sri Lanka's economic crisis did not commence two years ago with the former President Gotabe Rajapaksa getting elected. Nor did it commence 
an arbitrary 10, 15 years ago. It actually commenced the moment majoritarian politics took root, where we chose to make enemies from within, where we chose to look at Sri Lanka as only a country belonging to the majority Singhala Buddhists and everybody else being those hangers-on and therefore you choose to privilege the entire state accordingly, you created enemies. And when you create enemies of that nature, obviously your economy will have to be modelled in a way to contain those enemies. That's common sense. And therefore, when at the time the British departed, Sri Lanka was being spoken of as being a model country, a model independent, newly independent country by countries such as Singapore, which are aspiring to follow Sri Lanka, today we are a basket case. And there is no war to hide the fact that this has nothing to do this has nothing to do with the Tamil arm struggle. This has nothing to do with it. What it is, is that you chose enemies so that you can find scapegoats, you can ferment racism, use that as scapegoats and rook the country. Rook it for yourself and for your cronies. And today, the Tamil people of the Northeast who were discriminated on year after year that led them to the frustration where they had to ultimately choose to even give up their lives to try and find freedom as a better option, they are suffering, suffering the second time around. First and foremost, it was pure racism that targeted them. Now it is because of the complete inability to govern inability to govern and the complete sort of selfishness with which you are prepared to rook the country so that you can line your own pockets, the Tamils are suffering again. Now isn't this completely unacceptable? What will a person from the Northeast who is willing to sacrifice his life say today? Wouldn't his choice actually be double the more relevant to say that actually a separate state is the only way out? Now, is this the projection that you want after you brought the war to an end? President Ranil Vikramasinghe, like President Kumarantunga, in my view, honorable presiding member, are different from the average Singhala nationalist, Singhala Buddhist nationalist politicians. They have a capacity to move beyond that. They have the qualifications to move beyond that as well. But they didn't. President Kumar Tunga was probably the first president who openly spoke about federalism and got an unprecedented mandate of over 60 percent, which is still not matched. So one must ask, the ordinary Sinhalese people are not opposed to it. President Kumar Tunga got elected on federalism. That she chose not to do it is a different matter. Likewise, President Ranil Vikram Singh knows, he knows more than anyone else in this house, that a federal solution is the only solution that will make this country prosper. Prosper because you can cut down on defense. Prosper because every cent that you allocate for defense in a scenario where there is no war is literally burning money, which you can't afford. But he's not prepared to do it. Nor is he prepared to speak the truth. And that is 
the problem that we have. When he became Prime Minister in 2001, Honourable Presiding Member, I was a young member of Parliament. I had just got elected. Of course, he didn't speak about federalism. But he did say many things, including signing a ceasefire agreement with the LTT, which at that time we supported. We went out of our way to protect him. When President Kumar Tunga was being extremely hostile, we went out of our way to protect him. So as a young member of parliament who came to, for the first time to this house when he was prime minister, and who has been following his politics and his policies closely, I have no doubts, honorable presiding member, as I say, he's probably the most experienced person to be in power to handle the present economic crisis. He's also probably the most experienced person who will tell you that there is nothing wrong with federalism. Well, he should not hesitate to say that to the Sinhalese people. Federalism is not separation. Quite the contrary. Federalism in this country will, in fact, ultimately result in unifying the country, a country that has been divided from the time the British left. Not because of the British, but because of decisions taken in this own house. So at a time when Sri Lanka is, has hit rock bottom, isn't it at least now the time that a president who has nothing to lose, I mean, he has already lost. He has become president by losing. So he has nothing to lose more. At least in these last days of his political career for him, to be a statesman and tell the truth, the truth that will ultimately be a legacy, that will be the foundations for a new beginning for this country. But he's not doing that, Honorable Presiding Member. And it is for that reason that when he <coughs> made an impromptu or rather unspecified speech soon after he got back, from, uh, from the uh, Global Environmental Conference, where he invited the Tamil parties, our party took up the position that there is nothing to speak with the president. He knows what the solution is. He knows more than anyone else in this house who belongs to the Singhala community what exactly he has to do to find a solution. And as a basis for that beginning, at least he must be honest to the Sinhala people and say, look, if we want to solve the ethnic problem, then we have to go down the federal path. And it is only by solving the ethnic problem that we can afford to refinance the country in a way, in a way that we do away with this ridiculous expenditure on defense and other related matters. And it is only through that that we can actually invest in the future of our generations to come and our health, both of which are suffering. So our party's position has been and continues to be, Honorable Presiding Member, these debates regarding the annual budget and the economy becomes meaningless unless you are fundamentally prepared to change the Sri Lankan state. And if you don't have that vision, you are going to continue to waste money. Waste it because of your ignorance, or even worse, waste it because you have vested interest as I said, for the first 75 years of this country, you have been finding scapegoats to line your own pockets. You're going to carry on that path for the further 75 years. And you can decide to do that. But then you can't expect us to be a party to that honorable presiding member. We have suffered enough. We have suffered enough. Surely you can't expect a new generation of Tamils who has seen brothers and sisters abroad who are doing 
tremendously well, whose income is more than this country's income. Surely you can't expect those people to just simply sit and, and say that, look, we'll take a little bit more for another 75 years or so. No. If you don't at least now rethink, not only for your own people, but also for us. We are not going to just simply sit and watch. We will make it a very expensive wrong choice for you. We will. Honorable presiding member, we have no other choice. We have no other choice. And that means you will have to spend much more for defense. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Today, not a single member in this house is talking about a separate state, but you're spending, you're increasing. I believe this time's defense allocation is 14% is more than last time. It is your insecurities that will result in you pulling this country down further and further. Why? Because of the racism. And at best, because of the ignorance. So we will not be a party to it. Maybe members of this house will come and tell you, but the people on the ground are just not going to go on this way. And today it's only the Tamils, God forbid, in the way that you're treating the Muslims and the upcountry Tamils, that they also decide the same thing. And God forbid that the poor people of this country, the Sinhalese, ordinary people who you have rooked and who are ultimately paying today, will also rethink. Then you'll have a totally different scenario to deal with. Something very similar to what you had in the 80s. So it is in that context, Honorable Presiding Member, that we approach this debate uh, on the budget. Since we are debating the budget, I would like to just say a few words on the very specific subject. I choose to make much more. Honorable Member, you uh, have another three minutes. Uh, uh, ten minutes? Three minutes. Three minutes. Uh, choose to uh, speak more detailly under the ministries at the committee stage. But as, as, far, as far as policy is concerned, I will repeat what I have been repeating for the last two previous budgets. Honorable Presiding Member, the Northeast is a war affected country. Almost 15 years after the war, it still remains a war affected country. The President had visited the Northern Province over the last two days. He was in Wawunia and Mannar over the last two days. He knows that. He more than anyone else knows that. And that means you can't pretend as if that war affected Northeast can be treated on an equal footing with the rest of the country. So we have been saying that if those people of the Northeast are to in some way rebuild their lives, at the very least economically, and not fall even further down the precipice, then the Northeast has to be declared a war affected zone. And there must be some protectionist measures that are applied so that the economy of the people can first be protected and be allowed to grow to a point where it can then compete on an equal footing with the rest of the country. We have been repeatedly asking that this be done even before we became members of this house two years ago. When, we, uh, when the war came to an end, if ever President Vikramasinghe wishes to go back and see our critiques with regards to the annual budgets, we have been repeatedly saying that that is a must. And today, more than ever before, it's a must. Because the economy in the country is suffering, the ordinary people across the country are suffering, but the people of the Northeast, the average person in the Northeast is suffering 10 times over. 10 times over, at least. If there is no diaspora, honorable presiding member, those people would have died of starvation during COVID, and especially now with the economic crisis. So you can't allow this to persist. 
You can't allow this to persist, and it is on that basis that I wish to reiterate yet again that, firstly, if this country is to genuinely get out of this economic crisis, finishing, sir, to get out of this economic crisis, the ethnic conflict has to be resolved, and all others be it Muslim, be it upcountry Tamil, be it the workers, if those problems are not resolved in one go and a holistic approach is not taken, this country will bleed. We are already a failed state. We will be a totally bleeding failed state, Honorable Presiding Member. And as a more immediate uh, uh, effect, the, uh, the, the, the President must as I said towards the end, consider in, in principle protecting the economy of the Northeast and declaring it a war-affected zone. Thank you, sir.